Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I do have cinnamon in my coffee. For those of you that are not aware, Thomas Lee is a guy that is, um, he's uh, with Fundstrat and he's um, on CNBC all the time talking about the economy and where he sees things going and he also talks about crypto a lot. Um, this is a tweet that he did uh, in the last couple of days where he was talking about the Federal Reserve and how more or less if, if I was summing up this tweet I would say basically that Powell who um, is heading the Fed now basically told he said basically told you the Fed put is dead Powell he's talking about how when when um, Powell announced that the Fed put is dead more or less that's when all the stock markets uh, the stock market in the US started going crazy and tanking and the reason that that's the case, the reason that it's tanking is because everything that's been done the last 10 years has been propped up by the Fed. And now they're doing the responsible thing, which they should have done years ago. And they're saying, no, nope, we're not going to prop up this market anymore. The market has to live and die on its own. Now, they're not saying it that way. That's my words. But. That's exactly what they're doing. I mean, they've kept interest rates at basically zero for 10 freaking years. That's never been done in the history of the world anywhere, anywhere. Okay. And so now they're pulling that away and it's causing panic because everybody include everybody on wall street knew that this was a propped up market. Now they're all acting like they're surprised by this. Um, and they're mad that, that the fed's not going to stay there and prop it up. <laughs> anymore. Um, so what was interesting is C3 Nick um, went in and asked him as a response to this, he said, do you expect the money which is flowing out of the stock market just going into cash, etc., and gold, or does a part of it also flow into crypto assets? Are crypto assets considered to be a good, a good addition to portfolios in order to get closer to the efficient frontier? And then he actually responds to C3 Nick, crypto is becoming an asset class and the amount of institutional allocation is essentially zero. Well, when I first read that, I thought he was saying, okay, crypto is a new asset class and they're just not putting anything towards it. Well, when you continue to read on down, you realize that that's not what he was saying at all. What he's really saying here is it's becoming a new asset class. And if we really put things into perspective, they haven't put anything in yet in turn in, in comparison to what they can and will be putting in. That's what he's really saying. Because the response, one of the replies here, institutions are already in Tom Circle now proudly partners with over a thousand institutional clients, including asset managers, OTC desks, exchanges, token projects, family offices, high net worth individuals, and endowments in the Americas, Asia, and Middle East, and Europe. And this person's right. That's true. Institutions have been coming in. But there's what what Tom is saying here is that in the scheme of things, nothing has come in yet. That's what he's really saying. And then C3 Nick comes in again. He says, I think that there are more uncorrelated assets, just like crypto assets may, may be an interesting consideration for constructing portfolios. Do you get this feedback as well? And then Tom Lee says, yes, many are looking at this. And then he thanks him. But how interesting is that? What I love to show you is things like this. The digital asset investor has been telling you for the last eight months that it's just a matter of time. And, and when, when, this, when this stock market, this fake stock market that you've been watching for the last 10 years, I'm not saying that when the money, that the second that the stock market tanks, that the money is just going to flood into crypto. But here's what I am saying. This is what I, my point has been all along. What is about to happen is backed and Fidelity Digital Assets and Erisex and all these other Wall Street sponsored bro crypto brokerage firms are about to come in. And what's going to happen in conjunction with them coming in is they're going to begin to sell it to the public. In other words, the whole line has been, oh, crypto is scary. Crypto is, is a 
scam and crypto is this and that. Well, the second that you see Wall Street coming in, they, like we said yesterday, they've already coined the, the new term digital assets because now, oh, digital assets. Now that's, that's a, that sounds legitimate. Crypto sounds like a scam. It sounds like money laundering. But digital assets, now that's something we can sell. So when these Wall Street firms begin to come in, you're going to start to see the pop culture start to sell it to you. You're going to start to see the commercials, the Super Bowl commercials, and it will be led by Wall Street. They will be the biggest cheerleaders, not for crypto, but for digital assets and tokenized di digital, digital stocks. That is what you will begin to see, and we will all benefit from that. Okay, and that's what he's talking about here. But they have to, it has to be sold by them. It can't be sold by us because they are legitimate. They are the saviors of all of this. Remember, they are the ones that can, that really want to help the average Joe investor. Let them help them. I'm in. Okay, I'll be here waiting. Okay, moving along, I wanted to show you this. This is awesome. Um, you know, any time that you really want to change in the world, it all starts with the youth, okay? And when you begin seeing blockchain and Bitcoin um, courses offered at universities, then you pretty much know what's coming. I've told a story on here before. Let me get some of this cinnamon coffee real quick. I've told a story on here before about a time back in the 80s, or I think yeah, it was the early 80s when I was a kid. I had a cousin that went to Georgia Tech in Atlanta. My dad took me up there to Georgia Tech and my cousin took us into the computer lab and he pointed to this little thing that people had their hand on and he said, you see that little thing? They call that a mouse. And he said, that is what everybody will be using in computers in the coming years. And it's called a mouse. And we all just looked at that like it was the weirdest thing in the world. And go figure, what do we all use now? So anyway, when I see articles like this, it's, it's like bells going off because this is how you know what's really coming and blockchain is coming to the whole world because they're, they're offering it in universities now. And these aren't small universities. Listen to the names. Cornell University, Duke University, MIT, New York University, Princeton University, RMIT, Stanford University, University of California. I don't know how to say this word, so I'll butcher it. University of Nicosia, um, Universidad Europea, Euro, Europea Madrid, Madrid. But these are like huge, huge institutions. These are the finest educational institutions in the world. So it's coming, folks. Um, okay, moving along. Um, I wanted to show you this. This is this is. Uh, with the Bitcoin anniversary of Bitcoin's creation, Brian Armstrong went on to Twitter and he wanted to tell everybody how Bitcoin was his, uh, his, his always been hit. That's his initial love affair. And so he did this whole write up uh, on Twitter about how he went, um, how he fell in love with Bitcoin, read the white paper, and that eventually led him to what you see now as Coinbase. And, but what's interesting is when you get down here to the bottom of his thing, the first, the first reply is, I have a few words to say also. Start listening to what coins your customers want on your exchange, please. You still haven't listed the most requested coin ever. Isn't it time someone stepped forward and provided an explanation as to why you won't list XRP? And then this person comes in and they say, well, this is why. This is obviously an anti-XRP. Oh, XRP is a banking coin. It's one of those. The company is developing a solution that allows cross-border money transactions between banks, and XRP keeps pushing it to the banking system. Let me point out for ones who's in a tank, I don't know what that means, banks. Cryptocurrency idea is to get away from it, not to work for it. And the irony of what this supposedly XRP, anti-XRP person is saying is, that Bitcoin is right now being adopted by banks and Wall Street. And that's the irony of what these people, they thought they were going to be anarchists and be all anti-bank. And in the end, what has happened to them is banks and Wall Street are co-opting Bitcoin now. And so who was right? The guys with, with Ripple or the guys with Bitcoin? The guys with Ripple knew from the beginning that it was naive to believe that you were going to 
attach some digital asset and without the government being on the same on board that, that something was going to happen. The, those guys, the Bitcoin maximalists with all this anarchy business, that's just an immature thought pattern. You're not going to usurp the, the governments of the world. That's not, that's not how this is going to happen, folks. Well, anyway, what, the interesting thing is David Schwartz then comes in uh, into this thread and he says, banks are where value is today. We need bridges to where today's value is, is uh, if we're going to get mass adoption. In other words, what I just said, <laughs> if you want mass adoption, you're not going to avoid the banks or they will shut you down. The internet got most of its early growth from the military and existing centralized information services for much the same reason. And then this guy copies me on the conversation. So, uh, I didn't notice this until today, but anyway, um, as I've said before, Brian Armstrong is the problem at Coinbase. He's not the solution. And this guy will eventually be booted out because Coinbase, um, it's obviously still being run based. I've said for a long time, this guy's the reason you don't have XRP and, but, but that will not last. They will, I've said before, they will escort this clown out the door before they keep before they let all of these other, the finances of the world and all, I mean, what we're, what he's literally being surrounded right now. Binance has already kicked his butt and he's being surrounded by all of these cryptocurrency firms who, and digital asset exchanges, and they're offering XRP. And because of this one guy's philosophies or, or anti XRP stance, they haven't listed it. And so, but he will be e escorted out the door. I mean, he's got venture capitalists and, and investors in Coinbase and they're not, they're not, they don't care about this type of thing. They care about making money. And if XRP is a money maker, which it is, it, it's the greatest digital asset on the planet. So if, if it's a money maker, it's just a matter of time. And in the meantime, everybody, we're seeing it. I mean, I've been showing it to you this week. There are exchanges left and right that are not just adding XRP, but adding it as a base pair. And so, but if you don't believe me about Brian Armstrong being the problem, look no further than his tweet from back in 2015. Ripple, Stellar, and altcoins are, are all a distraction. Bitcoin is way too far ahead. We should be focused on Bitcoin and side chain. In other words, all these forks, these fork nightmares is what he thought you should be focused on. Well, uh, one of our XRP guys back then replied to him, which I thought was hilarious. The ripening got in there and he says, apparently you don't know what all coins are because you listed it alongside Ripple and Stellar, which are considered altcoins themselves. Bitcoin is too far ahead. How? Because it's older. Can't believe this was a serious tweet. Coinbase is going to crumble with your leadership. And the ripening is 100% right. Competition's coming for you, Mr. Armstrong. You're in trouble if you don't wise up a little bit. Um, next, I wanted to show you this. Hoder did a, a new blog. I'm not going to go through the blog, but I wanted you to know that he did it. It's worth your time to go and read it. And, he, and it's called Own Your, X, Own Your XRP. And he's talking about how more or less the private keys you don't need to have it on exchanges that you, you need to have it yourself and you need to have your own private keys or you don't own it. I wanted to tell you a story from along the same lines. Back in 2013, I was in, uh, that was when I got into cryptocurrency. There was a company called Cripsy.com. We only had a small handful of places that you could go and buy and sell digital assets. If you wanted Bitcoin, Bitcoin, the only safe play back then was Coinbase. You could go to Coinbase and you could buy Bitcoin and then you were going to sit there on Coinbase in Bitcoin. But what I saw back then was I saw the, the, the opportunity to go and buy other, I, I, my idea was Bitcoin, all these millionaires have already been made. Is there another digital asset that maybe is is like Bitcoin was a couple of years ago where I can buy thousands of them for nothing. And so Cripsy.com was where I found where you could go and buy several digital assets. Well, so on Cripsy, there was a guy and his name was Big Vern. He was on Twitter and he you would get you could buy. He, he offered almost every kind of digital asset you could think of. 
and he was very active on Twitter. He was all if 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 the assist, if anything was going going wrong with with his with Cripsy the platform, he was right there answering people's questions on Twitter. And and um, but what eventually happened, and this is crazy. What eventually happened is this guy literally skipped town. What he was doing, and, and I even talked to the attorneys that handled the case. And you're looking, this right here is the Crip, it's, called, it's CripsySettlement.com. What I was told by the attorneys when I spoke to them, because I, we were, myself, we, I, I was investing on here. But luckily, I got out. Just by coincidence, I got some a good bit of my things out before this happened. But what happened is one day, this guy that called himself Big Vern disappeared. He was out of Florida. He disappears to China is what the word was. And I was told by the attorneys that did this class action lawsuit that this guy disappeared and that he that he was never investing the crypto unless unless, unless you were earlier to the game. He did. He was. You were. He was letting people invest in, say, XRP. So some people were able to get it off. If they asked for their funds and wanted to transfer out, he would go and he would invest them. The way I was told, he would go and he would invest them in whatever that currency was, and then he would send up, send them out. But at some point, he I don't know if he had financial trouble, but he literally disappeared. The website goes dark. No transfers were allowed out. And I, I mean, I literally had family members that lost a lot. Okay. And my, I tell you that story. That's just one of the many ways that if your digital assets are on these exchanges that you can lose them. I do not talk about the Ledger Nano S all the time for my help. They've still got their 30% off uh, thing going. I thought that was going to be over on January 1st. But anyway, the point is, is that unless you have the private keys, like Hoder was saying, unless you have the private keys and you have this stuff in your possession and it's, it's on, either on a Ledger Nano S or a desktop wallet or a paper wallet, unless you have it like that, it's not yours. And you could wake up one day. I was telling a friend of mine who's got his, informa his uh, digital assets on Binance. I wanted to set up, I was going to help him set up his ledger this weekend. And the reason I told him, I said, look, um, you don't know. I mean, Binance is out of Singapore. I think it's a great exchange, but that doesn't mean that somehow uh, we could be prevented from trading on there at some point. It could happen um, because you've got regulations involved. Who knows what could happen? Um, and so I'm going to help him get off. But the point is, is that it's not yours unless it's either on your laptop or on your desktop in a wallet of some sort or if it's in a paper wallet or a, some type of wallet where you have the private keys. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that you do not own your digital assets unless you have the private keys. Thank you.